Hello and welcome back to Politically Incorrect. I'm Tom Cristiano. Well, tonight we have an outstanding group of panelists who are all candidates for the Chelmsford uh, townwide election that's going to take place on April 1st this year, and which is exactly three weeks from the date we're taping this show. And uh, with me tonight, we have Mike Rigney back for the third time in the show. How are you, Hi, Mike? Tom. Very good. Nice to see you again. Thanks for coming back. And we got to get you more often on the show. But I know you're busy. What is it, over in Brandeis? You're At Brandeis, yeah. And so, what are you, some sort of engineer I'm a lab or manager there, lab yeah. Manager? Mm -hmm. Gee. So, and you're growing your beard a little uh, bit beard, longer the now. Beard huh? is, nice. it's, it's winter strength. That's winter right. strength. <laughs> the, the winter coat has come in. So, are you going to go down to the goatee in a I'll, month I'll probably or shed once it gets a little bit warmer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it does help, though, in the it cold does. walks and everything. You have a little bit of. That's right. So, you've been on the school committee, what? Uh, this is your. This, you're uh, running this will for be your the end term? of my third year. So yeah, I'm, I'm running for a second term. Yeah, so. and you're the, currently the chairman. I right? am Which currently the chair. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. we'll a lot talk of fun. All about what's going on in the school committee later on in the show. Absolutely. And you are running unopposed this year, right? You and Al Thomas are both running unopposed. So until, that's good. Until the write ins start, but yeah, yes. Yeah, <laughs> so it looks pretty good, though. But So, that's a nice feeling. You don't. Yeah, have to I'm, worry I'm not at spending all anyway. much on, on buttons or yard signs this yeah, time yeah. around. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thanks for being here, Mike. Sure. And we have my friend Nick Parley with us. How are you, Nick? I'm doing well. How are you, Tom? Good, good, thanks. First time on the show for Nick. Oh. And Nick is running for a townwide office this year, the Board of Health, right? Chelmsford Board of Health? Correct. And Nick works uh, as the recycling coordinator here in Chelmsford, right? For yep. How long has it uh, been? About a year? About a year and three quarters right now. A year now. and three quarters. Wow, yep. time flies. Huh? Yep. And, uh, Henry Parley is your, your father, right, who is also, he's on the planning board. Yep. And uh, Donna Parley is your mother, and everybody knows them, right? So, so yeah. that should help for you get some for votes. Worse, right? yeah. yeah, no, no, <laughs> should help you get a lot of votes, and you're running on a post as well, which is nice. Yeah, again, I guess until the writing starts. That's, uh, yes, yeah. Mickey Mouse gets more write-ins than me. Right, 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 yeah, I doubt that that'll happen. Yeah. Maybe Minnie Mouse, but not yeah, Mickey. Right. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> likes Mickey, right? <laughs> His ears are too big. Yeah. But, <laughs> So we'll talk more about what's going on in the recycling department and your other position. You just yep. moved up to full time recently. Correct. We'll talk about that later on. Thanks for being here, Nick. No problem. And we have my good friend Dick DeFreitas with us tonight. How are you, Dick? I'm doing peachy keen. How are you? Good. And this is, I call it a Mickey Mantle time because Mickey Mantle had number seven, as you probably know, New York Yankees. And um, so this is your seventh time on the show, Dick. So my seventh time. Yeah. And uh, Dick has. I won't read his whole resume because it would take me a full hour to do it, but uh, as everyone knows, Dick is our current, or Richard is our current town moderator, and uh, he's running for re-election this year, and, and he is opposed this year. John Curlin is running also for that seat. And Richard has also been a member of the Board of Selectmen in the early 90s, like 91 to 94, right. also a chairman at some point during that. Richard has also been, like me, a library trustee here in Chelmsford. Mm -hmm. Richard also started his own company, a, a big successful company for many years and you in sold that in the mid, mid 70s, 80s. 80s and now you're the chief financial officer, right, yep. of your wife's company, right. Automatic Data Processing, whatever? No, uh, Automatic Auto Business Auto Controls. Right. I'm you sorry. You had me thinking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Guys, we refer to it as ABC Payroll. Yeah. And you're the past president of the Chelmsford Business Association, a yes. longtime member, yep. member of the year and everything. You were a town meeting representative as well. Two times. I was well, one of the original town meeting representatives. Yeah, nice. In 1989. So you know all about town meeting, which we'll talk about later in yep. the show, what's going on with town meeting and all the potential changes with the MACOM committee and all that. Well, thanks for being here, Dick. Yeah, it's a pleasure, as always. Yeah, yeah, I just, I would, ask you on the show more often because as a moderator, you can't take positions on various issues in town, so that makes it a little bit difficult, well, given that this is a discussion show, you know? That's very important, that whoever yeah. is moderator be totally neutral yes. and not express it, any uh, opinions, especially on things that are going to be on the warrant, but even things that are not going to be on the warrant, yes. because even if they're not controversial issues, yeah. having the moderator take a side or express an opinion can make it a controversial issue. Yes, yes. So I, I agree, Richard, and so that's that's why. So by the way, we're taping this three weeks before the election, exactly. So today the signs could start going out. I already saw one of your signs on Pine Hill Road, which yep. is nice. Yeah, that's Paul Gleason probably. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I went around, I put a few up, but the ground is still frozen oh solid. Oh my God, so how are you gonna do it? You're gonna it, do more tomorrow, right? Well, hopefully it doesn't snow and it ra if yeah. it rains, it might help. Yeah. But 
you've got a breakthrough that, uh, yeah. uh, oh, you know, I think tough. the ice layer is getting thinner, but you've got to break through it, and those wires aren't all that uh, yeah, strong, strong right? you know. Oh, my God. So, well, better but I'm not going to push it. I mean, if it takes yeah. a couple of three days to get them up, fine. I oh, have yeah. enough. I have enough to put up. Yes. You know, I, 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 many people volunteer to uh, accept lawn signs. Wonderful. And I'll get them up there eventually. And you had some big signs at your campaign party this yeah. past Sunday. Yeah. They were three of them in back. You huge signs. Big signs. Are you going to have those on, in the center on Saturday mornings or something? Or what is your plan for the three big signs? Or, or do you have one? No, I have one. <laughs> we will have a couple in the center, and we'll have one up at North. Yep, nice. So. On, the, on the sign holding days, you yeah, sign holding Yeah, that's days. a good idea, yeah. Nice. Well, thanks again for being here, Richard, or yeah. Dick, either, either one. I'll be interspersing your names once. It's Richard, once it's Dick. We'll go back and forth. That's okay, Carmen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is another one of uh, my names, yes. Thanks, Richard. <laughs> And we have my good friend Maureen Foley with us today for the first time on the first show, time. Maureen. Yes. So it's exciting, right? It's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> it's a little nervous, but that's okay. No, it's going to be so much fun. It's so easy. And Maureen, as everyone probably knows, works at the Chelmsford Library for quite a while, right? As, yeah. Are you the children's yeah. librarian? So? I am the head of the children's department. Wow, so that's I'm fantastic. So I'm the one in the department that works full time. Right. Wonderful. Yeah. And you run, you have a reading show here on Trump's I Telemedia, do. right? So it's not that I'm nervous being in front of a camera yeah. when it's my own show. I'm fine. Yeah. Um, I just have never been involved in, um, you know, politics in a Nasty serious business. way. Nasty yeah. business. Well, I hope not. I, I was <laughs> actually, I think that no one understands this. I was, political science was one of my majors in college. So wow. I've always followed politics. I've just never run before, so yeah. you know, it's completely new. And I'm so new. glad you're running for town meeting representative <laughs> yes, this year in yes. Precinct 5, yes. along with your husband, right? Yes, that's right. So both of you, and right. the others are incumbents in your precinct, right? I yes. think there's seven candidates running for six seats. It is at the time that we went to the town clerk to get papers, yeah. um, there were four incumbents who had said they were going to continue. And there were two empty slots. So it was fairly easy for me to go. And I'm a little grateful that that happened because if I had seen there was only one slot, I probably would have chickened out. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, uh, I think I would have, yeah. But I predict that you and your husband are going to do yeah. great because yeah. lately, non-incumbents tend to finish up by the top yeah. of the, for yeah. some reason, people tend to go why. for yeah. non-incumbents to yeah. a great extent. And then, then it's structured as to who's the most popular, the incumbents, and right. then it goes down. So we'll yeah, see how it goes. We have no right? idea, I mean, right? It just, we have no it just idea. happens to be. But many years ago, 20 years ago, and this started in 1989, we had voting for town meeting reps. Many years ago, if you were an incumbent, that was a plus, right? Absolutely. They have the asterisk next to your name. I've always but thought But something that. switched about 10 years ago or something oh. where it's like, oh, we want the new people, okay, you know, well, right? I mean, just look might at be the, good for I me. save all <laughs> the yeah. returns, so. Yeah. So you, you and your husband are going to mm -hmm. do fine, I'm right. sure. Okay. Oh, I bet on it. All right. I'm not. I'm Maybe. not betting on oh, it. Okay. I, okay. I'm very <laughs> grateful for the opportunity that oh, you, asked, gonna that do you asked me on this yeah. show. So thank you very and much. And we'll see you hopefully at Tommy. What's yes. going to begin the end of April, right? Dick? Mm -hmm. Maybe the last Monday of April. Mm -hmm. And the election is April first, as I might have mentioned. The polls are open 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. And so it's hopefully going to have a decent turnout. We only have two um, big contested yeah. elections. One for right. selectmen and one for a town moderator. Mm -hmm. So it'll see what kind of turnout we get. Right. We'll talk all about the election in a few minutes. Uh, but, well, first I wanted to talk to you all about running for your particular uh, seat. And, so, and, Mike, and, and the school committee, but, mm -hmm. so Mike, could I ask why you decided to run for re-election this year? Uh, Three years was it I'm, enough? I'm a glutton okay. for punishment. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, it's a, it's a chance to give back. And, and we've certainly, uh, uh, our family here in Chelmsford, um, We've been lucky and we've been fortunate to have so many people help with help with our kids, teach them how to play softball or basketball or football, take them on camping trips, uh, coordinate school enrichment activities, all these things for years and years. So uh, this is a chance for me to pay some of that back and maybe pay a little bit forward as well. Wonderful, because I know you're very busy. Not only are you working full time, what is it at Brandeis? Yeah, Brandeis, yeah. Brandeis, some head of a lab or whatever. Mm, uh, lab manager. Yeah. Lab manager, and you have like. 
Five children? Or just just four, but four. yeah, oh, just they, four. they move oh. quickly sometimes. That's not what it looks four. like five. You uh, gotta get out of the stick it's there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, only four. No, right. but that's that's a lot these days, right? It, it In is, those days, actually. it was fine, but I mean, more common right. but these days. Wow. Right. So it's going great. So you're busy with your children. So we're we're right? busy. That's that right. I mean, they have a lot of they have a lot of uh, after school activities and and extracurricular things as well. Yeah. Um, and of course, my wife works works full time. Yeah, your wife even, Deidre even is harder a than I do, doctor. really. Yeah, and uh, is she still a town meeting rep or no? Uh, her term expired this this time around. She did not choose to run. Uh, will be moving soon. So um, oh, to a different precinct. Yeah. Maybe. Hopefully not out of town, right? One. To one, yeah. huh? oh. So you better watch yourself. As long as you're not competing against me in nine. <laughs> oh, you're in nine. <laughs> no. All right. Okay. I'm in nine. Right, right. <laughs> but yeah, I've been a rep for about over 20 years. Never yeah. missed one meeting. And right. I'm mm -hmm. just lucky because I've never been sick on a meeting mm -hmm. day or sick enough not to go. But, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I don't even think I had colds or anything going. So yeah. I've been lucky. But uh, it's very important, though, right, to be a town meeting rep sure. and to vote and to show up. And it's, it's a very, very important position in town, our legislative body. So... Yeah. So when you move to Precinct One, uh, hopefully you'll run for town meeting. So I, yeah, I, I think uh, we'll we'll take a look at it next year. year. Yeah. And when is the move? When are you going to be moving? <laughs> well, this is a this is a long story. Uh, the pod's been in the driveway for yeah, for into three the months now. And, uh, um, oh, it's right, it's stretching right. out a little bit. Uh, oh, I see. I, I, we may we we will almost certainly still own the house in yeah. Precinct Six uh, as of Spring Town Meeting. Yeah. Um, if we sell it before that, I think I would step back and. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see what they can do to fill that spot. But if we still own the house, I think I'll keep that seat. I see. Oh, wonderful! wonderful. But did you buy another house? We had. Uh, and he picked one out. Nineteen right? Billerica Road, no, right, right across from uh, All Saints Church. Really, near the new fire station too. Yes. And the town uh, yes. A absolutely. Yeah. yeah. The, the town offices so are convenient. What no, are where, you know, homes? Both Deirdre and I supported the the positioning of the new fire station. And I uh, oh, good. You know, well, well, since you're we're not be afraid there, of it. That's good. Right. And you, it's a historic home that you're moving into. It right? is uh, the, the, the George Custer House, yeah, uh, nice. who, the the uh, um, I don't know inventor, uh, founder, and proprietor of Chelmsford Ginger Ale. Really? Yeah. Nice. My God, you got to make that something nice. about your house. Like every once in a while, you have neighborhood ginger ale parties. Or yeah, something. absolutely. <laughs> I, brew your. I, I, I've, I've been looking into home, home brew ginger ale. Yes, yeah. it's, uh, <laughs> it can be done. <laughs> well, thanks, but we'll yeah. talk more about the school a little bit. I thought sure. we talked to everybody a little bit first. So, Richard, can I ask why you decided to run for re-election this year? Well, being town moderator is a difficult job yeah. and is a long training period. Yeah. I have one pair of eyes. I'm looking down at 162 pairs of eyes. That's pretty intimidating. Yes, yeah. 162 pairs of eyes are looking at me, which makes it even more intimidating. Yeah. Uh, I've worked very hard at town meeting, yeah. and I want to continue to uh, push forth what I have as the four principles. One is fairness. Yeah. I think over the last three years, whatever your grievance may be about the town moderator, I've been fair. Yeah. I've gone out of my way to be fair. And I've done that all my life and yeah. work at everything. Yeah. Balance. Yeah. I want to make sure all sides of an issue are heard. Yeah. Accountability. Now, accountability, that's my crowning achievement. I brought in electronic voting. I rewrote the bylaw, I wrote the rules, and there hasn't been a single challenge on a vote that's been electronically, electronically recorded. Yep. So that has done its job and it's, the accountability is there. Yep. And the last point is transparency. I like people to see who is talking and who is addressing the meeting. Yes. Uh, that's why right. You know, I removed some table microphones okay. and had the officials stand up. Yes, yes. Now, I may have gone over the overboard on introdu introducing officials, but nevertheless, yeah. transparency. Let's yeah. see who, who the players are yeah. and what they have to do. So yeah. I want to keep those principles because that's what the 21st century is all about. Yes. And I want to make sure we stay in the 21st yes. century. And how have you enjoyed it? Have you enjoyed it or has it been just kind of difficult, but you're doing it as a town-wide service. I only had one frustrating night. It was the okay. last night of the last session. Okay. And what happened was uh, a bunch of reps said, you know, these meetings are going on too long. you got to do something. Uh, we should have time limits. I'm going to propose time limits. I said, no. I took the burden off them, and I said, no, I'll do it. Yeah. Well, time limits don't work in Chelsea. They absolutely do not work. Yeah. They work in Drakeit. Yeah. 
but they don't work in Chelmsford. That's another thing. I, I've gone to Drake at Westford, Borica Town meetings, wow. and uh, you know I learned from what they were doing there, and I brought yeah. things to Chelmsford that I thought would work. Yes, yeah. remains to be seen. Yes, and uh, maybe later on after I talk to Nick, we'll talk about the Maycomb committee, sure. the new committee Mark that Mark, you have. Mark, leave that. You got to Mar put Mark. Moderators Advisory yeah. Rules Committee. Yes, Marcom. Yes, here it that's, is. Here. That's your Boston accent. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> we can talk about how it was made yes. and how we went through the process because I've been meeting with them all through December, all through January, and all through February. And I can give you the chronology of how those. And I'm it's not like a voting member, and I didn't pick the committee. Yes. The rep each, picked the each committee. Rep did. And um, meeting about once a week, is it? Once right? a week. Yeah. And well, maybe let's Except talk for the about it for a minute, or for a couple minutes now. But so, could you explain to the people at home basically what the committee is and and you know why it was formed and what they're doing basically? They're coming up with the recommendations, right? Well, I wanted to be sure that going forward, we had mutually acceptable rules between the reps and the moderator. Yeah. And the way to do that, I felt, was to reconvene the Rules Committee. I called it the Moderator Advisory Rules Committee. Yeah. Now, rules are meant to be constrain the reps and they're meant to be followed. Yeah. Bylaws constrain the moderator, and that's the only thing that constrains the moderator. And that's recommendations are just that, recommendations. Yeah. But after meeting with the MyCom Committee for three months, I have 100% signed up to implement their recommendations. Wow. And Which I think I have here. Yeah, there's here. someone at my party Sunday said, oh, there's a fear out there that you're going to get all these recommendations, you're going to ignore them. Oh. Not so. Yeah. I will absolutely yes. follow them. Now, we can talk more about. Okay. Yeah, if we have time later, yeah. we can talk about some specific ones. Sure. And um, great. Well, it sounds good, Dick, and Richard, and um, everything is great. Can I have one name? Hi. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> Okay, we'll stick with Richard. Then. Thomas <laughs> Common. Yeah, because <laughs> I've known you for both names all these years. That's why I'm alternating. But thank you, thanks, Richard. Well, uh, Nick, so could you tell us about the recycling coordinator? You've had that for over a year and a half yep. now. And what exactly does a recycling coordinator do? Uh, I manage the sanitation contracts in town: the recycle oh. pickup, the trash pickup, and the trash disposal are the yeah. the three big contracts. And uh, I work with our vendors because we privately contract out for uh, all those services to try and get Chelmsford picked up in the most cost efficient and easiest way possible. Yeah. And uh, it's been a, it's been a nightmare these past couple months with a 10 inch storm every week. Yes, yeah. Yeah, which which makes my job a lot harder. Yes, because some days there's delays. For example, if there's yep. a big storm, they don't have trash pickup that day. Yep. We have a delay. Then there's a problem of communicating with the yeah. whole town yeah. about the delay. I'll always pray that. <laughs> <laughs> Always pray there's no storm on a holiday week because yes. Yes. A, oh my God. a Sunday collection is astronomically high. So we, yes. we oh, will. Oh, that's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. We have, have we had that not, this year? Oh, not, good, in the, good. not in the last 20 years. Good. Yeah. So do you communicate with these companies very yep. often? Uh, uh, if not uh, daily, every other day. Do you, who, who pays them? The treasurer pays them, right? So do you actually it's, see? It's a line item out of the DPW budget. I it's DPW uh, budget. solid waste and recycling. And how are we doing with the recycling this year rel relative We're, to previous years? Uh, we have a new company doing it this year. We have waste yeah. management picking up recycling. And I'm really happy with the service we're getting from them. Yeah. Um, recycling rates are a little low for the past, uh, for February. We're hovering around 24%. I'd like to get that much closer to 30 but. Oh. Like 24 is the the low end of good. I put How it that could way. you tell it was 24 percent, Nick? Uh, it's um, we do a ratio of um, the total refuse on the curb. Okay. So 24 percent of the weight picked up on the curb was recycling. So yeah, so you get the total trash weight, and recycling, everything, and yeah. that's 24 percent of the total way I see. Yeah. So our bill for the regular trash pickup, how has that been going? That is, is it is it higher than in previous years, or do they go up every year by um, a couple of percent? Are you talking hauling or disposing? Well, I picking mean, up the trash and then yeah. getting rid of it. I well, guess there's two different things, yeah. right? But so we're on a we're on the fifth year of our five year contract with okay. Republic Services, and yeah. there was escalators each year, which were to be expected. Yeah. And uh, we locked in five years ago when diesel price was two ninety. What is it now? It's almost oh, four dollars. Oh. So we're we're getting hit with the fuel escalator price. But other than that, uh, well, was that was that in the contract that they could yeah, escalate the the, uh, the third and fourth year that yeah, they could escalate. So, yeah. 
So we're, next year, it sounds like there's going to be a new contract. Yeah, for, new trash, negotiations. for trash and yeah. recycling next year. Well, I live on Drew Circle, and my service has been great. I, I have no complaints yeah. at all. They're, they're hardworking uh, guys. They're hardworking guys, yeah. and they do a great job. And uh, so I, I have no complaints. So you, you're doing a good job, too, then. You must be. Yeah. Uh, the and then you get calls from people like me periodically who might say, um, I have a TV monitor. I have a stereo. Yeah. How could I recycle that or what should I do with it, right? Yep. People who might I get just the oddball want some questions advice. too. Yeah. yeah. So how, how about how many calls do you get a week or is it hard to say? Uh, uh, it's it it's, varies it's so much. weather dependent, it's yeah. seasonal, it's, yeah. it, it's, it's tough to peg down. Yeah. But we have a, something coming up at the end of April to pick up, say, microwave ovens or old computers at McCarthy School, you told I, me, right? That's being run through the McCarthy PTO. McCarthy the PTO? End of April is our hazardous waste day at the yeah. town hall. That's, that's a pretty big event, run through the Board of Health. Nice, nice. But yep. the McCarthy is also at the end of April, right? Yep. Did you it, it happened last year on the same oh. day, and it was kind of a happy accident that they oh, actually yeah. scheduled it to happen on the same day this year. Good, good. The yeah. last Saturday in April. So that'll be good. That'll be a big day for me to yeah. get rid of uh, some stuff. And, you know, like, the, the PTO like my does... my old girlfriends. Or yeah. No. <laughs> and the PTO does pretty well. They, uh, they, they, they make a couple thousand dollars. Wonderful. Yeah. That's good. No, I'm looking forward to it because for some reason I'm trying to clear out the clutter of my house. I don't know if it's because I'm getting older or what, but I really want the clutter to, yeah. to kind of move out, and I want it nice and neat. So I, I went through my dining room already, and I'm donating a lot to the Trumps and Dog Association. They're having a yard sale, so I'm donating to them. I gave away a big stereo. Mm -hmm. the, what's a good thing about Facebook, you could post something big that you might want to get rid of that might be useful, and I had four people contact me right away because I was giving it away. And, and well, that's one, celebrity furniture, isn't it, you're giving away? Yeah, yeah. right, right. <laughs> so yeah, I'm glad because, and I had that stereo for a long time. You kind of get attached to it, but then it comes to a point, if you're not using it, it was a record play, you know, the turntable kind of thing. So I let it go, and he said he would use He's a musician, so he's big, I guess, in these old type of records. Richard Dufresne, who's a great yeah. saxophonist, by the way. And what's the name of your band, Richard? The Casual Saxtet. Yeah, and you play quite a bit in town. I, I, I did noticed, a, right? uh, so, uh, uh, um, four week jazz series last summer, two in July, two in August, each separated by two weeks. Wow. The first night was Brazilian and Latin jazz. The second yeah. night was uh, bebop and traditional jazz. The next night was big band swing. And the last night was a tri tribute to Igor Stravinsky's chamber jazz classic, class at UCLA in the early 50s, and known as West Coast Jazz. Wow. And it was yeah. very, very well received. We had from 60 to 90 people at each. Uh, and where, where and did And it they was take free. Place? It was the uh, uh, Chumpson Center for Study the Arts, Center for the Arts upstairs. Not, yeah. And it was yeah. free. I got the local businesses to contribute to foot the bill for all four performances. Really? That's fantastic. I expect to do an encore performance in May. May 18th, yeah. I think, is the date at the CCA. That's fantastic. And then I'm planning uh, at least one in July and one in August. One July, wow. But I have to find new wells to go to. I can't go to the same oh, wells no, to yeah, get the money. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I didn't charge admission. It was free to the public. That's fantastic. And for how long have you been playing the saxophone, Richard? Uh, I started on clarinet when I was 10 years old. That's a tough instrument. Playing saxophone since I was 14 years old. Wow. You know, I used to play sax, alto sax. When it started when I was about 14, or so, fifth grade. So that would be like 11, right? Yeah. So 11 through maybe 14, 15, 16. But, Dick, I wasn't any good at all. That's very difficult. you got to practice, right, I, to be and good. It, it, and I, I, didn't wanna, I didn't have time for it. I and I have some of the best saxophone players in the northeast part of the country. Yeah. And, wow. uh, and the, my guitar player, for instance, uh, pl was playing under John Williams and the Boston Pops. Mm -hmm. And the only reason he lost that job is because when Keith Lockhart came in, he didn't want a guitar in, his, in the Pops. Mm -hmm. Not because he did anything wrong. He didn't want a guitar. Oh. Well, Williams had all that Star Wars yeah, kind yeah, of music, right, right. and he had, you oh, know, it was a I little yeah. more slanted towards yeah. rock than what Lockhart is. Well, your band is very good. I've heard you before at the Trumpster Center for the Arts. It's a wonderful band. You, you should be, and you probably are very proud. Well, we of do it. concerts too. Job. We're doing a couple of concerts. Uh, one in North, Northampton, and probably one at York Beach. Wonderful. And uh, I'm going to try to book more. Great, great. See the guys in my band. And we, we usually do a, a Tuesday nights at the Athenian Corner yeah. uh, in the summer. Not yeah. every Tuesday, but some Tuesdays. They're willing to play on Tuesday nights for short money because they like the band. But on the weekends, they all go out and make tons of money. And I can't afford to howl oh, yeah. my own band. Yes. Sunday night, 
I just have to give them a certain yeah. you know, living wage, and it's fine. Nice. But the short money is on Tuesday, but they don't play any less, uh, you know. Yeah, well, right? Yeah, they do right. great, yeah. yeah. Well, we, great. Had, we had, I can tell you this one story. Yeah. We, at the, uh, one of the concerts, we had this lady, uh, older lady, I won't mention her name, who was celebrating her birthday, and they asked her what she wanted. She said, I want to go to the Athenian Corner and hear that band again. All right. And she wow. brought the whole family to the Athenian Corner, and it was unbelievable. Right? Nice. She, wow. So. so every Tuesday night, did you say? Not every Tuesday. Oh, okay. No. But in the summer, it'll be like one a month, maybe two a month, yeah. depending. And it's a good thing. You're on, on Facebook now, which is great. So you posted on the Trumps and Reps yep. and Reps and Residents, which I hope everybody at home joins that if you haven't already. Yep. There's about 800 Trumps of people in that group, so Dick posts things there. Also, you I have, have a your group own called Casual Jazz. Casual Jazz page, yep. and yeah, so that's great. Well, thanks. I just want, uh, Dick, uh, Nick, just to finish up. Uh, so you also recently went full time to town, right? Could you talk yep. about? Uh, the additional duties that you you have and yep. Well, I was already under the the DPW, so uh, DPW, yeah. the facilities offered me um, the remaining time, the the 15 hours left or so, if um, yeah. I wanted to see if I could get uh, the playgrounds up to uh, yeah. the new uh, state specs. And so we we're developing a program where yeah. I'll be making contact with each playground maybe every two weeks to every three weeks and make sure that there's nothing. Um, seriously wrong with the play structures and we'll save some money on our insurance. Are, and what are these new specs for playgrounds that um, are in? Maya, our uh, municipal insurance agency, just wants um, oh. more contact, um, more, uh, written form of each inspection of the playground that just needs to be submitted. Just to make submitted. sure everything is safe and functioning yep. well, basically, yep. so kids don't break their neck or something. Yep. I say, great, great. So it's going good then, Nick, right? Because you just started that, what, about a month ago, right? Being full-time or something? Uh, about two and, two and a half months, months ago. Two and a half yeah. months ago, great. And you bought a house recently yep. in Westlands area. We just got to get you to run for town meeting rep. Once yeah. Mike moves out, there's going to be a <laughs> nice opening there. <laughs> really political street we got. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's, that's right. <laughs> Thanks. Well, Maureen, uh, I know you're running for town meeting rep this year and your husband. And maybe one of the reasons is because you're interested in the grinder pump issue. Is that correct? Yes. Oh. It used to be that people in town knew me as the children's librarian. Yeah. And I'm beginning to think that people now know me as Dave Foley's wife. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, I mean, I said earlier that there were two s slots available. And I thought about it really a lot because it's an enormous responsibility. And I thank all of you that have done it for years. Um, and I said to myself, okay, I'm willing to take this on. Um, I do hang out in my day job with all of the young families in town. So just overhearing conversations in the children's room of the library, I know an awful lot about their concerns. Um, the concerns of Precinct 5, because I'm not telling why, it's just Precinct 5. Um, it is kind of incredible that there are 500 grinder pumps in the town. 150 of them are in my precinct. So I do feel um, an obligation to uh, represent them yeah. at town meeting, especially now. I mean, if all goes well, that will be resolved yeah. in the spring, yeah. and then I'll have five more meetings about other things. Um, and and I am, I, I hope I enjoy it. I've just yeah. been a little intimidated about running, but you know, I'll get over that. And once I'm in the the situation, yes. I've always actually enjoyed yeah. and respected politics really respect the people that stand up yes. for public service so, yes me yeah. I, yeah. I as well yeah so are you on that committee the grinder pump committee that they got together with Ellen De Pasquale and others right now that committee that got formed at the end of uh, town meeting my husband is on that and that's how his profile has oh. gone up a bit in town um, he is the most vocal member of that committee. Uh, he's really bright and he's got a really good memory and he's an electrical engineer so he understands parts. There you go. <laughs> he understands parts. He understands the thing. And, and one of the things that has always motivated him in his life is um, problem solving. So as far as he's concerned, this is one gigantic problem that he's trying to get his mind yes. wrapped around. Yeah. And it's a lot of hours, and I hear 
a lot of the details and a lot of the engineering and take in as much as I can, but I in particular am more motivated by the people's stories yeah. that I've been hearing. And um, that, and we'll go into it a little bit in a minute, but I have to say that the, the first ones that came in front of the committee, because the public is, um, you know, Tom Gilroy's been doing a great job um, as the chairman of that committee, and he invites people to come mm -hmm. and to speak. And it is um, hard for me to listen to some of these people that have uh, limited means. Uh, That's the thing. I mean, they have limited means, and when they have to have someone come to fix their grinder pump, the first thing that's asked on the phone is your credit card number because uh, uh, they will not come to your house for that service call before that credit card number. And so uh, my heart goes out to, uh, um, to a number of the people. Yes, in the, and yeah. some, they were saying, they don't have credit cards or their budget is too tight their to give them? Their budget is too tight. We're talking about, you know, senior citizens who are trying to stay in yeah. their home, okay, trying to stay in their home. And what, what is the charge approximately the, to come well, out? Well, I or think, uh, you know, I mean, these are p some of the details I might be getting wrong because uh, I'm very fortunate, okay, I haven't had any problems. Oh, good, I don't good. think, I don't expect any problems. Yeah. Um, I think it's about $80 a service charge. Yeah. Um, that goes up if it happens on nights or weekends. Oh, so right, it right. could be $150 you're putting on yeah. the credit card just for the guy to show up in, you know, see, yes. at your property yeah. to assess the situation and figure out yes. what needs to be done. So now, now, is your group going to have something ready for town meeting? I know it's not on the warrant, but you're going to have a special town meeting or something this spring? This for the grinder is, pump issue? Um, it is, to me, who's new to this whole process, it's a tad confusing. The group, who is the Sewer Fairness Alliance, had a warrant the last right, town yes. meeting. Yeah. Okay. They have submitted a warrant this time, slightly different from the others. We were listening to all the reps, and what has been submitted is a bit different. What the committee is working on is pretty much, as I say, Tom Gilroy has been really kind of specific about what is the charge here, what is it that we are as a group, you yeah. know. And an awful lot of it is understanding the situation. Uh, there's a lot of engineers on that grinder pump committee. Yeah. Understanding the product, understanding the problems, and understanding the money. I mean, how is it? that we can rectify some of these problems. Yes. Um, they're making tremendous progress. Yeah. One of the political things I'm a little unaware of is, there was one point that the Lowell Sun had made a headline, and it said that the town manager had said there wasn't going to be a specific kind of a warrant article because we had worn out of time. There is a warrant article that there is from, two. there are two, that are from the public. Yep. There wasn't one that was put together by the town. Right. Okay? Yeah. But there is there is the possibility of a special town meeting yeah. if the town and the residents are getting coming together. Yeah. All I know is that report is is going to be submitted with two weeks um, before Two Whatever the deadline is, they're going to make it two weeks before town, weeks meeting, before town meeting. So that the got, report will be. Yep. The, oh, good. Yeah, good. yeah I know, I'm sure of that. I'm sure of that. And um, so you don't know what the rec recommendations will be. No, in award. fact, we're filming okay. tonight on a Tuesday, and um, after this, I'll probably go to the meeting and watch. But they meet on Tuesday evenings. I think tonight and next week will be their final input. Um, Tonight, there's going to be somebody from the manufacturers of the grinder pump itself, E1, okay. and there will be a representative from the group that services them. So they will be there tonight, and I do have an interest, and I want to go see what that's all about. Okay. And then next week, I believe there'll be a wrap-up, um, but they have, their documentation is, they've done a lot of work and yes. documented a lot of wow. stuff, and, um, and from that point on, they'll be in the writing process to I get see. that report wow. prepared. And your yeah. husband will participate in that writing process, right? Absolutely. Right. He's, been pr he's been very good um, as far as making sure everyone passes in documentation. We needed, you know, records, receipts. So you can read on a receipt what the problems are. 
um, and has transcribed some of the, you can go on YouTube, you can go on Chelmsford Telemedia, you can see what the testimony was. They're all filmed, what you were mentioning earlier about transparency. It's one of the greatest things YouTube, about this. How could they find it, Maureen? Do you know what the title is or what they should type into YouTube? Actually, he, I'm not even um, sure he wants to, me to say this, but I'm going to anyhow. He himself has a YouTube channel, okay? He, your, your yeah, husband. yeah, my husband, yeah. yeah. Dave Trouble. Okay, but one of the things he's been doing quite aside from the committee is he's been trying to help out. I mean, it's almost like house calls with a doctor, okay? So people have been contacting him as like an expert in town, and he will go over to their house. And he wants everyone to make sure that their alarm works. It's a big issue. There were defects uh, between 2007 and 2009. Uh, some of the things that were installed in Chelmsford and probably one of the reasons that there's been such a hubbub is because we were given faulty equipment between uh -huh. 2007 and 2009. So if those switches are not working and if the alarms are not going off, I mean, you're in a lot of trouble. Yes. So he'll go around if anyone, he has filmed our house and neighbors' houses and show you how to test your alarm. Yeah. showing you how to oh, show, he'll open up okay. wiring and he'll say he's an electrical engineer, he'll say that a backup alarm, he found quite accidentally making a YouTube thing, he found that a neighbor's one was miswired, went around the neighborhood and found half of them were miswired and it's because the electricians, the information they were given was confusing, wow. it was ambiguous, they wired wow. it wrong and those alarms weren't working. Wow. So do you know the title of the, where they could find it on YouTube? Maureen, well, or actually, it's okay. probably the best place to go is the SFA okay. website. Sewer Fairness Alliance. Sewer Fairness Alliance, website. SFA, okay, because great, his great. stuff is linked there, great. and that's the, that's the go-to place for, for those issues. Well, it'll be interesting at town meeting, Maureen, and um, yeah. good luck with all of that. It's going to be, remember last, it was like four hours or more discussing yeah. that before it was postponed. Well, that's because it went over two nights. Yes, over and two nights, And as a result, yeah. two hours on, on the first night was just thrown out the window. Because we, well, when we started, yeah. it got a little complicated because a rep came and challenged the fact that the town manager was answering for the presenter. And it was a citizen's petition, mm -hmm. and yeah. he was answering, and yeah. he raised the point of order, and I accepted it. I said, Mr. Mm -hmm. Manager, you have to uh, mm -hmm. sit down. You can't represent that. So when we get to Marcom, they spent all of two meetings trying to define what the role of the administration is yes. when they disagree with the citizen's petition. Yes. Now, in order to make it fair, I let him have a rebuttal. Yeah. Good. And then yeah. I let the presenters have a rebuttal to the rebuttal. Yes. Yeah. That's and good. That's all I could do. Yeah. But I thought keep the discussion fair. in the first night was useful. Um, I, because I was there both nights, and I think those two hours, that information of the problems and everything, grinder pup owners were coming up talking about problems. Remember that? Yep. I went to the microphone and asked. I said, "All these grinder pump people were there." I said, "Well, let's let them speak." Okay. You know, yeah, but that was a that was a problem. But <laughs> yeah. you're not supposed to be coming up during the question right. and answer period talking about their problems. They're supposed right. to oh, ask correct. questions for information. Right. 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 And I relaxed the rules, which in discussion with Marcom, the rules are going back to what they used to be. Yeah. You have to go through the moderator because it yeah. became mm -hmm. confrontational between a presenter and yeah. the questioner. And that's yeah. not the intent of the question and answer period. The oh, question correct. and answer period is to gather yes. information that you personally do not know. Yes. Save your arguments right. for debate. Yes. I agree, Richard. I agree. But once the debate starts, I think they could come up and, and well, speak. So, but whatever was stated there, though, I think was useful information anyway in the two hours because we got a lot of background information. Whether it was appropriate for them or not at that time, I think it, it, it's useful if somebody comes up and gives their story about what happened to their grinder pump. I know you remember See, that, Maureen. Al, right? I, you were I there was that there. Night, I was right? there. Um, and I know yeah. you've had Ellen on, and she's, oh, yeah. she's very knowledgeable Ellen about it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she was the presenter. And so yeah. she did uh, give the big picture great. And that what took a while, right? So part of it, it was took, a presentation. It took most of it. Half an hour, That's maybe right. or more. Right. Or whatever. But what happened was, yeah. because there were so many questions that may not have been questions, they started, they started to sound like statements. Yeah. Because that part got so long that when it did get to the debate, 
There's there were the people, there were only four people that were scheduled to speak. Yeah. And Lisa Fuller was one of those people. I know her from story time yeah. and she has little children and she had one of those, I was talking earlier about those failures and the switches. Yes. She had yeah. two switches fail. One that would alert you with an alarm that you know something was going wrong but her alarm switch was broken and then the second one is the safety one that if things are going wrong it's going to empty the pump that broke that woman when she had a backup did not know it was the grinder pump she said it couldn't be that I would have had an alarm right. and it's vacation week and she's got children at home and they have to go to neighbors houses and she part of it was just this perplexity I have to share one thing that's just, I'm sorry, there's a lot of things that are just strange. And so people in the Grinder Pump Committee had been asking, well, what kind of information did you get? What kind of training did you get? Um, anyone that was home when it was installed, you know, would get the little warranty information, would get you basic information. If you weren't home, they'd take the warranty information and they'd put it in a Ziploc bag yeah. and they would tape it up inside the cap of the grinder pump or they some people even like wired it so that it hung down into that like well part now I'm sorry but there's none of us that know that none of us know to none of us want to um, pick up that right. cap to find out educational things yes. that we need to know. They should have definitely made sure it, everybody part knew of it, exactly and part where of it was, was and education. had that documentation. Absolutely. One quick phone call to every owner. I don't I understand. That's and, terrible. And it was some, there were so I, many installers, there was so much confusion, so many years um, yeah. that a lot of people weren't even given the inspections that they oh should have been God. given so that you oh. could have caught these things at oh, the beginning. Well, thank, yeah, thank you, Maureen. So. Wow. Well, thanks. Well, we'll have a few other topics maybe yeah. we could get to, which is, I, people may not have comments, but the selectman race we have coming up, we have two candidates. We have uh, Joe Reddy is running and Bob Joyce is running. Bob Joyce had been a selectman in the mid-90s, and he was on the planning board for many years, and I believe he still is. Um, and Joe Reddy is a broker at Reddy Real Estate, and um, so... So those are the two candidates running for the one seat. So um, I think both of the parties, by the way, are coming up. Bob Joyce is this Friday at the Chumpsa Community Center at the Old North Town Hall this Friday night. And two days later, I think it's uh, March 16th, Joe Reddy is having his party beginning in the afternoon at the Chumpsa at Elks. So does anybody have any comments? If you don't want to talk about it, that's fine. But any comments about this race, what you think of the candidates, you could say who you prefer, except for Dick uh, can't say it. I'm you sure. won't get that out of <laughs> yeah, me. Yeah, right. <laughs> Not even if you no, uh, right. put me on one of those water boards. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, any any I'll, thoughts? I'll, I'll I'll say it because I was at the candidates' night um, just last week when they right. went in front of the business yep. community. Yep. Um, I did show up to to yep. assess, you know, um, the mod town moderator and the selectmen debate. And near the end, there was a question asked about, you know, if you had to, if you were on the selectmen, you know, if you were one of the selectmen, is there anything you would have done differently recently? Yeah. Um, and Joe Reddy did say that he regretted that the selectmen were not the body that took on this grinder pump issue um, and said that if he were on it, um, he would. And so uh, I have to tell you that that is uh, something that swayed me and that it made me feel that I could work with that person and made me support him um, for uh, selectmen. Thank you. Any comments from this side? Uh, working in town hall, I'd prefer not to say. Right, <laughs> right, yeah, I guess that's that, uh, yeah. yeah. I'll say I, I, I can work with either one of them. I, yeah. I, I know them both, not, yeah. not particularly well, but at least casually. Yeah. I think they both are well-spoken. I think they both bring uh, a, a useful experience and knowledge to the position. Yeah. Um, in, in terms of difference, I, I see Bob perhaps is looking for smaller government. That, that might be his, his main objective. Yes. Uh, I think Joe is more open to the idea that, that there, there are things that we're not doing now that we could be doing. Yeah. And looking, rather than cutting back yeah. to, to, to what we can do, yeah. let's talk about what, what other things can we do. How can we, how can we yeah. do a better job? How can we expand the role? 
Yes, because Bob is emphasizing, I think, either tax rollbacks or keeping the tax increases as low as possible, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas Joe is talking more about maybe potential new programs or whatever. I, I think that there's, emphasizing there's that, that tension. Much there's absolutely that tension in town. I mean, yeah. I you know, we with the school committee, we've seen it. Yeah. Uh, we have a number of areas where where we are not we are not running what we would consider a, a full service. Uh, school yeah. district. We don't have full day kindergarten. Yeah. We know we need to do something to improve the quality of the lunches, especially at the yes. at the elementary school. And there, the issue is is both uh, both material equipment and, and also being able to afford the people to operate the equipment, staffing yes. levels. Yeah. Uh, we we don't have the number of nurses that are recommended right. by the state. We're not short by very much. It's okay. like a we need another, I think, one position across the elementary schools. Yeah. I believe the same is true with the guidance department. We're, we're short a, a couple of folks there. Um, it, we are already running a reduced budget. Um, and so I'm, I'm very excited to, to talk to people who think that maybe there's more we can do. Yeah. Rather than saying you're already, you've already gone too far, yeah. pull back even farther. Yeah. I, I prefer the approach of yes. let's talk about what we can do, how we can grow. Great. So are you in favor of no additional cost, full day kindergarten, or fee-based kindergarten, full day, or no uh, full day I, kindergarten at all? So uh, here's the thing. Our five-year plan uh, that the administration and the school committee working together have put forward calls for full day kindergarten in Chelmsford. Um, it's to just, to just say we're going to do full day, no fee kindergarten right now, it's not, we don't see where the money comes from. We are going to have to ha take a hard look at the budget. We're going to have to have discussions with the with Board of Selectmen, with yeah. FinCom. It, it is uh, a political matter. We, we have to build a consensus in town uh, if we're going to bring in the kind of money to do that. Yes. An alternative would be to do a fee-based kindergarten. Uh, however, there are, there are other problems associated with that. The main one being that if you offer a fee-based full-day kindergarten, you are required by the state to offer a no-fee, half-day kindergarten as well. Um, so logistically, it becomes very complicated. It, it's difficult enough because, again, we don't have su sufficient space in the four remaining elementary schools to do full-day kindergarten, all of the classes there. So any any sort of full-day proposal. Why is that, Mike? I mean, why can't they just stay because over where we, they have Because we is? haven't spent the hundreds of thousands <laughs> of dollars or tens no, of millions of dollars to build bigger schools. I, I okay, mean, no, but they're in a room for the half day now, right, the kindergarten. Mm -hmm. Now, they, they're, some, you would have they to, can't stay you would have that to, afternoon in the same room? Or there's somebody already else a, already there's already an afternoon in class in there. Somebody else can't so be in there So basically already. you need yeah. twice as much space yeah. as you're using now. And so the... Yeah. The basic plan is to is to put some of the kids into the Westlands, and again, yeah. this presents challenges. How yes. do you how do you bus kids from all over town to the Westlands? Yes. How do you right. what happens if a family uh, has a kindergartner going to the Westlands and a first grader going to South Row? How does the parent put those right. two kids on two different buses at the same time in the morning? Yes. There are a lot of challenges oh, associated yeah. with this. Yeah. We cannot we can't rush into it, but it is our goal, and so we're gonna yeah. we're we're gonna do everything we can to work towards it. I, I can't tell you that we have a solution ready to go, but yeah. but I but again, that's that's something where we have to push forward. We can't pull back. We can't yeah. say it just costs too much. Let's give up. Yes. We have to that's it's our job to find a way to make that happen. Okay. Yeah. And you also mentioned the the lunches just quickly sure. that we'll talk to Dick and for a minute. Uh, what's going on with that? Did they change the lunch program because on Facebook there were a lot of mm -hmm. parents were complaining about the quality of the lunches. I didn't eat them myself, so I don't know if they were good or bad. I've eaten, them a, I've eaten them a couple of times. Um, yeah. I would compare it to airline food. Okay. It's, you know, if, yeah. if it's done well, it, yeah. it, it's certainly not obnoxious. No. Um, it, it's, it's not a five-star yeah. meal at the Ritz or La Boniche. Okay. Oh, yeah. um, you know, but, but always the parents have the option of sending their own lunch with the kids. Which many there, of them do, right? There's, been a, there's been a double yeah. whammy there in terms of, of what the food we're serving. One is that we cut back dramatically, uh, 2008, I think. There were nine C cuts, middle of the year the budget was cut. Um, and one of the, one of the ways we res that, that Chelmsford responded to it was to basically cut the staff at the, at, at the, especially at the elementary schools for the lunch programs. So now we're understaffed and, and that went along with having prepackaged food brought in. The other thing that's happened is that there have been a number of new state and federal regulations related yeah. to, the, to the content of the lunches. 
Um, and so it's, again, it's, it's an area where the, the old economics uh, aren't, aren't allowing us to do what we want to do. Yes, and so, yeah. again, we have to find a new way forward. We, we can't yeah. just give up. That's our challenge. Yeah. I noticed part of the federal regulations for the lunch program is to have either skim milk or 1% milk. Mm -hmm. I believe I, Janet, sent, well, Janet yep. Eskenberg sent them to me. And I remember when I was young, we had full milk, either chocolate yep. milk or whole milk. And not, the kids weren't overweight at all. And I, I think that's, that's why they That's right. Now, the problem, it seems to me, Mike, and I don't know if you could, is the kids got to get out more. These days, there's so many computer games, working on the computer, being inside, watching these big TVs, whatever. They're not getting out and getting the exercise. Mm -hmm. So it seems to me that the problem is physical exercise more than if they have whole milk or skim milk. Yep. And so I think could we make sure that the kids are getting enough exercise, at least getting plenty of recesses? Well, and again, sports, there's, et it would be nice if we could guarantee them all an hour of, of recess or physical activity a day. But, Throughout the whole day, but yeah. what we're But we're seeing pressures from the academic side to give them more time in math, more time in ELA, more time in social studies. Uh, something has to give. Uh, yeah, we, we right. you know, our school day is what it is. Yes. Um, we've, we've tried rearranging things. They have, uh, uh, the elementary schools have gone to recess before lunch. Um, that seems to have, that seems to have improved both uh, both food both appetite and uh, behavioral. Um, so there are things oh, we good, can do, good. but it's a that's a place where the schools run into some societal issues too. Yeah. I, you know, I was one of those kids. My mom kicked me out of the house in the morning yeah. and said, "Don't come back until dinner time." Yeah. Um, on the other hand, I could ride my bike. I lived in a in a relatively undeveloped suburb. I yeah. could ride for miles and miles and never cross uh, yeah. something as busy as 110. Yes. Right. Yes. Nowadays, I think it's much harder for the kids to do that. The bike path is a nice addition but yes. even there you've got a couple of hazardous crossings I'm not sure you want to send your 10 year old out unsupervised like you're that right, and right. that, so that means to get the more exercise you have to integrate them to your to your schedule as a parent uh, and that's or, a, that's or a in challenge. The schools, for example with the recess the schools can, the schools the can schools do some and of maybe it maybe have them play some kind of games and if there's a gym in a gym right. or whatever but somehow yep. to get them to move around. Even in the classrooms a little bit, you could mm -hmm. do knee bends. I remember as a Boy Scout, they mm -hmm. asked me to get up and teach everybody how to do exercise, calisthenics they called it. But moving is so important. But it And is. I know you're doing the best, and I know you have the academic requirements as well, so right. it's a tough job, Mike, and thank you for doing <laughs> it, because I know you put in a lot of time, yep. many hours to do this. Um, Richard, I wondered if we could talk a little bit sure. about the Maycomb Committee. I think I printed out a lot of their recommendations, but maybe you could tell us some of the highlights that you think the changes that might be coming up. Well, first I want to uh, say that I, yeah. I asked for that committee because I wanted what came out of it to be mutually acceptable to the moderator right. and town meeting. Yeah. Because some of the changes I made didn't catch. Yep. There was pushback. Yeah. Not that they were bad, because right. they work in other towns. Yeah but they didn't catch here. Yeah. So rather than you know fight that battle, I want it to be mutually acceptable. Yes. Now, they've been meeting for almost three months and spent a lot of time going over the rules, and I'm not a non-voting member, and I don't make motions, and I was there basically to uh, consult on technicalities. Yeah. I did, towards the end, give some opinions. Yeah. The first meeting they had, I was cut to shreds. It was a personality thing. And right was, in front was, of was you. style. Oh, I said, I can take it. Just tell me what's, what's bothering you. Wow, that must and have been a tough meeting for you. It, well, I was prepared for it. And my biggest detractor has somehow become my biggest ally. Oh. Because yeah. over time, I got to respect them. There are some fine people on that yeah. committee, and yeah. I didn't pick them. We yeah. picked by the precinct. Yeah. They all worked very diligently, every one of them. I've never been on a committee that worked as hard as the Marcom committee. Wow. But mm -hmm. I gave them a package that had a, a, a notebook with the pertinent mass general laws, the charter, and the uh, bylaws yeah. that applied to town meeting. And then I got the town to buy the ru yeah. rules book, the handbook of, uh, of uh, Robert's Rules? Uh, well, it's not Robert's Rules, it's called Town Meeting Times. Okay, yeah. It's a parliamentary procedure for, okay. for town, town meeting. Huh. And after going, th as they're going through this, yeah. they came to realize that I do know all this stuff yeah. and I haven't violated anything. Yeah. And the other thing they came to know is I am willing to do whatever it takes 
to make it comfortable. Yes. So I say unequivocally 100% of their recommendations. I don't have to follow them, but I will. Yes. And if anyone out there is in fear that I won't, right. that isn't going to happen. Yes. I will. In fact, I want that committee to continue on as an oversight committee. Yeah. So at the end of every town meeting, we say, okay, what worked, yeah. what didn't work. Yes. Okay? Every town meeting. And if I come up with a new idea or somebody else, we will vet it through the MACOM uh, committee yes. before anything is done. Wonderful. So okay. some of the rules are going to be modified or sure. changed. What they've done yeah. is they've want, they want to go back to one microphone. Okay. Yes. It was never about the number of microphones. You know who yeah. made it about the number of microphones? Roy Early in his cartoons. Oh, and oh, I give him a oh, lot I of that, credit, yeah. okay? That was very funny. <laughs> yeah. But it was never about the number of cartoons. It was yeah. about, I mean, the number Mike's of microphones. Guy. It was about balance. Yeah. Limiting the right. questions in a question and answer period is never about right. uh, uh, preventing people from asking questions. You can ask as many as you want, yeah. but two, and then go to the end of the line yeah. so that it's fair for everybody. Yeah. I understand okay. that, yeah. Now, I'm going to lose one microphone, but they've given me more, like they took like, one gun away, but they've given me a bigger gun with more ammunition on the other microphone. So In I what have sense things. Could you, okay, well, you're talking, I, about, yeah. I can say that a motion to uh, remove the question might be premature. If all we uh -huh. hear is four or five people oh. and I haven't heard an opposing oh. point of view. Right. Yeah. I can put that motion aside yeah. and say I'd like to hear an opposing point of view. If anybody has one, right? And right. then that person yeah. could come. That's a good idea. Right. Yeah. To and the microphone. Things like that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So that will, that'll happen. Uh, any, well, you've got the are there any going to be any time constraints so that we no. get the time to move in faster? Right. Don't doesn't okay. work in Chelmsford. Great. But is it going to be? I'll tell you when there will be yeah. time constraints. If a town meeting rep comes up and says I want to limit this thing to forty minutes. And we vote on it, and they vote, okay, yeah. then it'll then be it limited. Be, yes, yeah. But I well, won't do it. Yeah, okay. Oh, our time is running out. But you did mention the one microphone. Uh, place it, oh, microphones will be placed at the tables for the, uh, you know, the selectmen, I think, and all there'll that. Be, uh, there'll be microphones placed committee. in front of the table yeah. where the person addressing the, the uh, microphone ha has to stand up yeah. so that the reps can see who's talking. Yes. And the people at home can see who's speaking. Yes. Oh, and that's, that's important to me. That's yeah. very important. Oh, yes. And that we're going to have the town meeting reps uh, sign in, right? Yes. And if they leave, I think it says, uh, and any rep that leaves before adjournment must turn the voting device into the that's town clerk designated. That's a strictly my yes. Yeah. The Rules Committee recommends the town moderator that there be two screens, one of which is dedicated to electronic voting tallies, while the other displays the motion being voted on. Oh, yes. That would be good nice. if we could institute that. Yeah. It's going to be a tough one to institute, but yeah. they have made a number of recommendations. Yeah. They have made two bylaw oh. changes okay. and some yeah. a couple of rules changes, and they've made suggestions to the selectman and the uh, town clerk and the uh, town manager. Well, what I would suggest that there was a very, this is a very informative show. I want to thank you all for being here. Thank you, Mike Rigney. Thank you, Tom. For being back again. Thank you, Nick Parley. Yeah. That was easy, right? That wasn't too bad. Oh, great. Right? <laughs> and thank you. Well, I'd like to ask yeah. for your vote and your support in this upcoming election. Okay. Having a moderator yeah. is an investment. You have to yeah. follow through with the investment. Thank you, Dick. Thank you. Thank you, Maureen Foley. That was fun, right? It was. It, it was, was Tom. It was fun. And I'd like to thank our camera people, uh, George and Tom and Dan, and our director, Pete Padula. If you have any comments on the show, please email me at tchristiano at comcast.net. Also, please uh, remember election day is April 1st from 7 a.m. until 8 p.m. Um, and I hope to see you at some of the upcoming uh, campaign parties and uh, all around town. In the next three weeks, it's going to be exciting. In three weeks is election day. Thank you very much for watching. Ciao.